We have just entered into the second part of the season of Lent. Yesterday, during the fourth Sunday of Lent, we have the story of the man born blind and Jesus coming to give us light. In the first part of the season of Lent, for the first three weeks, the message tends to be negative because the message was simply calling us to repentance, to do penance, and to seek forgiveness. The second part of the season of Lent tends to be more positive because the focus is no longer so much on mortification and doing penance. That is presumed that we will continue doing, of course. We hope so. But more importantly, the emphasis is to focus on Jesus, who is the life giver, because the ultimate goal of Lent is not simply to mourn for our sins, but more so to share in the resurrected life. And that is why we have two scripture readings today, speaks about this hope that we should have as we continue to journey towards Easter. This first reading from prophet Isaiah speaks about the Lord telling the Israelites in exile, I will create a new heavens and new earth and the past will not be remembered. Because the Israelites thought that God abandoned them. They were in exile. And God said, be glad and rejoice because I shall create Jerusalem joy and her people gladness. And not only that, the Lord promised that there will be no more weeping and even for old men, uh, they will live to the end of their days. Even to die at the age of 100 will be dying young. Mm. And not to be lived to 100 will be the sign of a curse. This symbol of fullness of life, long life. And precisely in today's gospel, Jesus is the life giver. We have Jesus who has come to give us life. Life to the fullest. Not just life on this earth. Prolonging of human life is not necessary. The best thing in life. Because if you live a long life, but it's a life of misery, you cannot forgive people. You are full of hatred. You are angry with everyone. That is actually hell on earth. That is not eternal life. Eternal life is when we live the life of God. That is why Jesus told Martha, whoever believes in me, even when he dies, he will live. And those who believed in him will never die. In other words, whether we are dead or alive, so long as we have the life of Christ in us, we will always be happy, whether on earth or hereafter. So if people are frightened of death, if people are always looking for a lengthening of human life that is to be short-sighted in what the Lord wants to give to us. It is important whether we are living on this earth or life hereafter. It is important we live a meaningful life, a life that Jesus has told us to live, a life of giving, a life of sharing, a life of loving. That is the eternal life that God wants to offer to us in Christ Jesus. Therefore, what is required in today's gospel is really faith. Do you have faith that Jesus is the life giver? If you have faith, then you follow him. If you have faith, you remove your blindness. You walk the light as the gospel told us yesterday. Jesus is the light. We walk in the way of truth, in the way of love. But the problem is precisely many of us, we lack that faith. That is why when the court official came to Jesus and said, come and heal my son. And Jesus said, so you will not believe unless you see signs and portents. These words were not addressed to the court official. It was addressed to the crowd because the crowd, they were always asking for signs and signs and miracles. They saw the multiplication of loaves. They saw Jesus performing great works and still they asked for signs. It's just like some Catholics, you know. They are looking for one apparition to another. Always looking for more and more and more apparitions. You can see everything and still you don't have faith. So what is more important and the Lord demands from us is faith. That's why the Lord told the court official, go back home, he said. Go back home and your son will leave. And the man said, can you please come and heal my son? He is at the point of death. You say you go back. 
You see this man, really of great faith. He could have insisted that the Lord should come with him. And we are told he went back. And because he believed in what he could not see, on the way back, his servant came to report to him that his son had recovered. And that is what faith is all about. Faith is to believe even when we do not see what is happening. And that is what the Lord is asking from each one of us. In the letter of Hebrews, we are told, you know, only faith can please God. And all the forefathers of Israel, they had great faith. They were commended for their faith. But they never saw what they were promised. Because the author tells us, God has a greater plan for them. And so it's very important, even when we pray, some of us say, you know, we pray with faith, but our prayers are not answered. And this is where, again, we are short-sighted. God does not always answer the prayers according to what we ask. Because God knows better what we, knows what, better what we need than we ourselves. And so it is important, therefore, that we need to trust in God like the court official, to trust in him and to believe that he knows what is good for us. And so today, this is where when we surrender in trust, the Lord will do wonders. Let the Lord decide how he wants to heal us, how he wants to answer our prayers, how he wants to empower us, how he wants to enrich us. And so in this case here, the Lord wanted to work a deeper miracle. You see, the court official, he was more concerned about his son dying. Jesus was not simply concerned that his son was dying. The whole family was dying. And so, that is why he told him, you go back. And when the son lived, the whole household was converted. You see, the greater plan of God. We are short-sighted. We are short-sighted. If Jesus had just healed the son, perhaps the household would not have believed. And so this is very important for us. Today, let us pray that we continue to trust in the Lord and surrender our lives to Him and to continue to walk in His ways so that when Easter comes, we can truly share in His resurrection.